Hello again. I am Nico Bree, aka Freelancer, and this is part two of the tutorial slash walkthrough series. And for those who kind of skipped over the first video, um, the last video I finished modeling the general um, the engine part, so the general shaping of the engine uh, met my standards for what I want uh, for that particular part. And I've completely, or I've started a completely new SketchUp workspace um, to begin shaping the body and other features. And I do this mainly because of kind of like a psychological trend with my models where sometimes I have a good idea of where I want the model to go or where I want to start a model. And as I start... Uh, creating the the details and I start creating parts and everything in shapes my general idea of where I wanted to go starts to get skewed and sometimes I completely lose interest in altogether so I'm sure pretty much every kind of artist has this problem where they simply either lose interest in their work of art and they put it off or they just completely stop altogether and so when this happens to you, because believe me, it will happen, especially when you're trying to free model something and sometimes, you know, you just simply cannot get something that you really like going. A way to counter it is start on one little part, you know, get it to where you kind of think you want it and then start by making a completely different workspace and then start again. That way you kind of have... You go in with a fresh mindset. You're not hindered by trying to match one style with the style of the first object that you made. Because if you make a new model, if you make like the body of a spaceship, at least in my case, where I make the body of a spaceship and it doesn't match the engine, the engine style that I have, then I'll go back and I'll change the engine style, then copy and paste that sucker right into the new workspace that I have, and It'll, it'll flow right and it'll look cool and it'll inspire everyone else because that's ultimately the goal <clears throat> so that definitely helps and you know you as you get more experienced with the program and and just 3d modeling in general I believe that you'll find other ways to counter it that's just my particular my personal way of dealing with that and in this part I start with I started with a simple triangle and then I just started adding angle edges uh, ang I started angling the edges and I started cutting those out and then I started offsetting the shape and extruding it using the alt key or sometimes I would just do it the hard way and pull out the offsetted shape and just connect the lines and then when I have a general idea of how one side of, of the, the ship is gonna go I copy and paste and mirror it so I can get full spectrum of the ship so I know some people do all the details and all the all the whole model you know on just one side and then they copy and paste the or they make it a component and then they copy and paste it and just mirror it and completing the model um, that way is very 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 effective when making spaceships especially big ones such as like the carrier or um, the the guardian the guardian battleships that I've made such as Con the the Congo uh, the, those those types of styles do definitely help so I encourage you to do that but um, just the way I do it is just I do it right off the bat not make worry about components or any of that stuff because again I don't know how it's gonna go yet so I just I play around with the the shapes until I get something good going and then I start. Uh, that's when I start sectioning off things and be like, okay, this this is probably going to be a crucial feature. I don't want to screw this up, so you know, I'll make it a component, uh, move it into place, and move on with the sketch. Yeah, move on with the sketch. Some of the notable actions that I conduct in this model is I section off a, a specific feature, and in this case, the the angles the angled tips of one of the features at around the seven minute 
15 second mark and what I'll do is I'll yeah I'll cut that part off by creating um, all three faces or excuse me I'll, I'll cut it off by creating a, uh, a face inside the, the feature and I'll select everything that is in front of that face so it doesn't affect the, the back end of the feature and I'll scale it and I'll pull that object or I'll pull that specific part out to make it longer and pretty much more appealing to the eye really <clears throat> and it makes it look cooler so you'll see me doing that a lot in my models thing that also helps is selecting the faces of certain parts and pulling them back or forward to increase the the angle steepness and that's really awesome too a, a really good feature to help you kind of get things the way you want them shaped or how you imagine inside your mind A lot of these features and a lot of these different tools that I use are pretty basic in nature so after going through uh, the basic Google SketchUp tutorials and learning how pretty much the program works and how it functions and then going ahead and adding all little plugins that help you um, makes the, the process of creating things a lot easier. I went ahead and pretty much taught myself for the most part how to do things with little help from tutorials like I learned how to do the alt uh, alt extrude after going through some tutorials after I was learning how to make domed uh, surfaces like dome and circular surfaces so I could make objects like planets or radar domes and stuff of that nature um, so little hints in there are also explained in the tutorials that are better to learn earlier than to learn later. Once you learn the, the basics of just how to make general sh shapes and stuff like that, that at the end of the day, all, all these models are really is just it, an increased number of shapes put together to form something that really looks awesome. And that's all it comes down to. So at the end of the day, it's really just down to how, how much effort and how much practice you put in on binding those shapes together and forming something that looks visually pleasing and one thing that I've found with my models is that they may be visually pleasing but at the end of the day I could still do better so I have to consistently sharpen my skills you know try different uh, try different styles and try and widen the way I do my models and you'll hopefully see a lot more curvier objects because I'm starting to get into that whole Battlestar Galactica feel for some of my ships and Battlestar Galacticas have the the kind of gator head shapes and then of course they have the the curved engine pods and the curved uh, 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 fighter pods flight pods on the sides and Grasping those curves and those angles is very, very, very hard for someone who creates relatively boxy like shapes because, you know, I, I base a lot of my models off of Halo and they don't have a lot of curved ships. They have more of a hexagonal type ships and boxy and boxy angles that are relatively easy to make and replicate and then create your own style from. So dealing with curves is a whole nother ball game. And all you have to do is just keep practicing. <laughs> 